Greetings and welcome to an LGR thing about Missile Command. And in particular, it is my version of Missile Command that I have here, the Cabaret Cabinet Edition by Atari in 1980. Now this was my first arcade machine that I have ever bought. And as of now, it's still the only one that I own, but yeah, it's awesome. It's an all-time classic, one of my favorites. And it's the Cabaret Cabinet Edition. You know, it's a little bit shorter, but still you know, more or less full size. Totally playable, and it has these really cool wood grain on the sides, and dude, it's just a really awesome cabinet. I did a video about it when I bought it in the summer of 2019, so you can see that if you'd like to see a little bit more of just an overview of the cabinet, how I got it, and what had been done to it to fix it up. The track ball problems and some of the board and monitor issues that it had. It was pretty much all sorted when I got it, but there were still some things about this particular cabinet that I wanted to improve and personalize and upgrade, and that's what this video is going to be about here. So as mentioned in the previous video about this cabinet, there were some things that I wanted to address down in the coin door area. While you can play this on free play, and that's how it was set when I got it, I really like the idea of inserting my own quarters and credits and stuff into the actual coin slots to play the game. I don't know, it just, it rings more true to me as an arcade experience. But the coin mechanisms themselves had all sorts of issues. Like they just weren't accepting coins reliably at all. And the red coin reject buttons, they were kind of sticking and the door down in the little bottom right there, that little flappy thing was sticking as well. Not only that, but I had no way of saving high scores on the machine. And yeah, that's an original feature, <laughs> I suppose you could say. These machines didn't come with battery-backed saving or chips that allowed memory to remember anything after you turned it off or unplugged it. It would just lose all your high scores. But there are modern ways to get around that and upgrade this. And that is one of the very first things that I bought. It was this little PCB from Braze Technologies. It's called the Missile Command Multi-Game and High Score Save Kit. And really it's just a little board that goes between the 6502 processor on the Missile Command motherboard, and it adds the ability to save high scores whenever it's powered off as well as a bit of a nice bonus feature in the fact that it also allows you to switch over and play Super Missile Attack whenever you want, which is a 1981 enhancement kit, kind of ROM hack conversion by General Computer Corporation, just like a more difficult version of Missile Command. The main reason I wanted it was the high score saving ability. Just need to grab the key to the rear of the machine. There's a wooden door panel thing that comes off so you can access the PCB and other internals. And what we need to get to is all the way in the bottom left, like near the very front of the Missile Command cabinet. That is the 6502 processor. And in order to reach that, it's thankfully very easy to get the boards out of these machines. Really, in my case, it's just a matter of removing the wiring harness and one screw on the top here, and then just sliding the entire board forward and there we go. I can now reach the CPU and pull that out with a IC puller. Yeah, look at that. Classic 6502A microprocessor. Good stuff. And yeah, it's just a matter of lining up the little notch on the board and the CPU and plugging it in right here and then sticking that back into the Missile Command main PCB in the same direction as the CPU would have been before. And yeah, that's it. That That is all that is involved with these kind of upgrade kits. It's a very easy mod, and there's a bunch of systems that Braze Technologies, and I'm sure other people make these for. It's really cool stuff. And there we go, got the system powered back on. Uh, so far, so good. In fact, it looks exactly the same up to this point. But then if you press the Start 1 and Start 2 buttons at the same time, you can switch over to Super Missile Attack and play that version of the game instead of the original Missile Command. And, uh, you know, again, I really just bought this for the high score saving ability, but it's cool to have this option to play something a little bit different from time to time, although this is much more punishing, just downright difficult than even the original Missile Command. So this absolutely destroys me every single time. Wow. If you're like one of those crazy marathon players and you can play it for infinity, then maybe you'll be able to have more of a challenge out of this. But for me, it's just punishing, so I pretty much never play it. Anyway, I'm happy to have the high score saving ability on the regular Missile Command game. That was enough for me. But with that out of the way, the next order of business was to address some of the coin door and coin area issues and just little things that I wanted to tweak and make better. And actually, one of the first things that I did was I dropped 800 quarters into the coin tray. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, okay, so the reason that I did this was very simple. When you drop quarters into this thing, they were just plunking down on this plastic tray and it sounded stupid. You know, when I was playing arcade games as a kid, I always liked that satisfying sound of the quarter or the credit just dropping into the machine and clink, it just, uh, you know, the metallic coins up against coins. So a quick and easy way to get around that, you know, just make it sound a little more awesome was to drop a lot of my own quarters in there. So yeah, just went to the bank, withdrew some quarters and put them in there. Yeah, it sounds much more legit now and dropping quarters in. Yeah, but whatever, that's just a silly thing. Uh, the main real thing that I wanted to address with this coin door were the mechanisms themselves. And as you can see, the little red reject buttons stick in place. Not that there's much reason to press them in, this machine doesn't actually reject coins, but the fact that you could press them and they got stuck annoyed me. And yeah, those flappy doors at the bottom are getting stuck and just inserting quarters to begin with, sometimes they would just get stuck in the coin mechanism. So I needed to really take it all apart. And to do that, there are several different nuts to take off of these bolts, because as far as I could tell, the coin mechanisms were working okay. They're just plastic ones. There weren't metal ones, unfortunately, but it's all this metal and kind of the, the rail where the quarters slide through that seemed to be the problem. But yeah, once I got this first part off, I was able to get to the red plastic reject buttons and see what those were about. <laughs> yeah, for one thing, they were incredibly dirty, so that probably had something to do with it. And then also the labels that are inside there were different. That bothered me as well. I wanted to replace those. Anyway, continuing with some more of the mechanism here, and I was able to get this top part off. And yeah, this thing is bent in several different spots. Who knows what happened to it over the years. And then finally, these little doors at the bottom. Turns out they are screwed into the front faceplate as well. It's not just the door that comes out, like this entire front piece comes off with it. So uh, yeah, that's interesting. It was very dirty, very grimy. I figured, yeah, it's probably just crap getting in the way. So I took these over to the sink and gave them a thorough washing. In fact, there's a lot of this machine that could probably benefit from a thorough washing, but we're gonna start here. And yeah, just a bit of dish soap and warm water and it's already looking a lot better and the door is flapping around more freely. But once it dried, I started noticing there's this kind of rubber degradation, or maybe it's a kind of plastic or something, I don't know, but there's a coating on here that is coming apart. And I think that's actually what was causing a good bit of the sticking. So I pulled off all the chunks that I could and actually added just a little bit of lubrication, screwed them back onto the coin door itself. And yeah, check it out. The doors are nice and freely flapping around as they should. Now that uh, little things like this are super satisfying to do on such a big machine like this. I don't know why. Next up were the coin reject button areas. And yeah, these were so nasty. I can't imagine they've ever been cleaned. And so I just took a little a cloth alcohol wipe thing and swiped away the main junk that was going on. Years and years of sticky fingers and coin residue and who knows what. And it was not enough. Absolutely had to bring out a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol and just keep on going until I got as much of that grime away as I could. Now, as for the red buttons themselves, I was considering replacing them outright with some brand new ones just to really make it shine. But uh, I realized they weren't quite the exact same size, even though they seem to be online according to all the websites. But no, man, they're totally not. They're totally different design and size. And when I put them in there, they wiggled around and just didn't feel right at all. Plus that little stem in the back didn't push back far enough to actually move the coin mechanism at all. So yeah, this is not gonna work. I'm just gonna use the original ones and clean them up as best as I can. And since I'm doing that, I may as well take the opportunity to address the little mismatched labels that are inside there, because yeah, you can actually pop these things apart. I didn't know that and replace the labels that are inside there. And that immediately gave me an idea. Like what if I could just recreate the kind of label that I like in Photoshop? So I did, I just scanned it in, stuck it in there in Photoshop and recreated it and printed it out on paper. And I mean, it's looking pretty cool. Now these original inserts, it's worth noting that they're kind of a translucent hard plastic. Really though, I don't care about the material so much. I just wanted to make sure that light would shine through it and it kind of looks like it will. So we're gonna give it a shot. And after taking the red plastics to the sink and giving them a nice good scrubbing, those are looking pretty darn good too. So I'm happy with that. So let's try my newly printed out coin reject label thingy here. And 
yeah, it goes right in place and looks <laughs> pretty awesome inside there. You wouldn't be able to tell that it's like some cheap recreation at all. And shining a light through it, it looks Eh, you know, not as good, honestly, because of the paper, it's a little bit thin, so the black levels don't look as great, but eh, it'll work for now. And since I'm screwing around with making my own designs anyway, why don't I just come up with my own completely custom coin reject label? <laughs> and so, yeah, man, I just stuck an LGR logo on there and look at that. It's like the kind of thing I always dreamed of as a kid, like having my own arcade games and my own little logos on things. I've even thought of like getting my own custom tokens made. If anybody knows a good way to do that, let me know. I, I might actually do that. But yeah, this looks awesome as well. I, I, I am thoroughly happy with this already. And now the coin rejection buttons match. Ah, that right there alone makes me happy. So we'll stick those back in the slots there and get the door back on slightly. And yeah, you can look at that, man. Oh, that looks so cool already. This is gonna look awesome when I get the lights in place. And oh yeah, dude, exciting stuff. Speaking of the lights, they're actually installed in those little metal bits that I pulled out earlier that I think are kind of bent apart. So I'm gonna take the lights out and really just take this whole thing apart. It's just bent metal everywhere. That's how it's held together. So fixing it is just a matter of bending it back the other way, I think. So uh, yeah, let's see how this works because man, like I said, this was all kinds of out of whack. It's not supposed to be exactly straight, but it is supposed to guide the quarter down this little path on the coin mechanism itself and then drop it into a slot. And what was happening is the quarters were getting stuck along that path because the metal bits weren't guiding the quarters down it. So I just kept bending things and bending things back until the quarters would drop through every time. I mean, that seems like problem solved to me. So we'll just bend the pins back into shape and get everything stuck back together and reinstall them on the door. Just in reverse order of the same thing that I did earlier and just kind of plug the lights back in. Those are just those little leads there and that's it. <laughs> Coin mechanisms are a lot simpler than I imagined they were as a kid. They always felt like some magical thing. Like, ooh, I thought they had some sensors to recognize credits or something, but not really. It's all very mechanical, so it can go very wrong very easily, especially with these cheaper plastic coin mechs that are in here and <laughs> things slightly bent out of shape. Let's just get a quarter inserted here and listen. Nice. Now the coin mechs are very much reliable and cleaned up and looking great with those LGR inserts in place. Yeah, man, this is exactly what I was hoping for and it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Thankfully, this stuff is all admirably low tech. I really enjoy working on these mechanisms now that I know that they're relatively simple. I do wanna maybe upgrade the inserts with a better material, but you know, that'll be something to do sometime in the future. I'm happy with them for now because at a distance they look fine. So I was just gonna leave things there and that was gonna be the video, just taking care of the coin door and the little upgrade board. But Drew Nicholson got in touch. He apparently runs the channel The 8-Bit Pit and he generously sent along a bunch of really cool Missile Command related things along with a warning saying the arcade addiction is real. And uh, yes, yes it is. But yeah, look at this awesome stuff. He sent along some metal coin mechanisms as well as some Deoxid D series that is always very handy to have a little bit more of, along with some miniature little light bulbs. And these will go inside those coin rejection mech areas in case those ever burn out. And also a little fluorescent starter for the fluorescent bulb that's behind the marquee, I presume. And finally, a cover for my coin tray. So this is cool. I figured there should have been something that went on top here, but yeah, this will just slide on top of the plastic tray and this is just sort of a cover. You know, it's got some slots for the coins to fall through and just sort of complete that whole thing. Oh yeah, dude, I mean, he'd sent along so much cool stuff. Look at this. Some replacement operation maintenance and service manuals for the original Missile Command full-size cabinet. It pretty much applies to mine as well. But yeah, let's go ahead and get these metal coin mechs installed because dude, these look satisfying. Oh, that's so much more satisfying. So this will be about the simplest upgrade in the world. It's just a matter of pulling out these plastic coin mechs that are already in here. They're held in place by rusty metal bits. <laughs> They're not supposed to be rusty, uh, but you know, they are. And it's fine, we accept it for how it is. And then you can just drop in the new ones right in the same place and that's that. And yeah, I like how easy these are to swap out. And it makes sense that they are like this because then you could just use the same basic coin door all over the world, you know, swap out the coin mechs for different currencies 
and credit styles, you know, if you wanted to make your own tokens like I maybe want to do. And then the coin tray itself, just pulled that out, put it on the floor here, and we can stick the cover on top of that. That looks <laughs> way more legit. It has slots for three coin mechs, but the ones on the left and right will line up with the ones that I have in the machine. Quarters just drop directly in there, and that's awesome. It's much more sturdy looking now, and it's just a pleasing result. Again, thank you, Drew. But we got one more order of business, because while I've been poking around in here and doing research on these machines and looking what other people's cabinets look like, I noticed that mine has this blank area on the back panel door with some staples and little bits of paper in there. And I figured something must have been there before. And yet, yeah, turns out, Atari originally had stapled to the back door this Missile Command self-test procedure sheet. That's about 17 by 11 inches. And luckily, a website called Mike's Arcade had some of these backdoor operation sheets scanned in and available for download. So I was able to find one for Missile Command. And yeah, that's perfect. I'm totally gonna get one of these made up and put in there. So first things first, I just got the back door here. And you can see these four staples and little bits of paper where the sheet used to be. No need for any of that anymore. So we'll just pry the staples out of there and take care of the papers and, you know, get it cleaned up a little bit and vacuum away the excess nastiness. And I went to a local Staples print center and had them print out a nice copy in 11 by 17 paper. And here we go. It's a bit more bleach white than maybe it should be, but eh, it's cool. It'll yellow eventually, I suppose. Now I did change one thing around though, where the staples were before, it seems like the paper was stapled all the way near the bottom of the door, which actually makes this sheet rather hard to see from the inside, just looking through the coin mech area. And I wanted to be able to see it, just looking at it from the front of the cabinet. So I moved it up a bit, stapled that in place right there. And yeah, man, check that out. Brand new operation sheet. Yeah, just get that plopped into place and there you go. Look at that, you can see it. Now, whenever I need to change around a dip switch setting or whatever, I can just quickly look inside of it and refer to the back there. And yeah, I've used that a time or two. It's useful to have, and I'm glad it's there. And you know, at this point, I'm just getting obsessed with weird little details. So <laughs> I ran across these stickers. These are some from Atari here, defective warranty parts. I don't think this actually goes on the machine. I'm not gonna put them on there, but I thought it was cool. So I picked it up. This one, on the other hand, this is an Atari service center sticker from really nearby Asheville, North Carolina, although they spelled Asheville without the E in the middle, but apparently SDX Corporation used to be a thing near here. Now, I don't know where this machine originally came from, but I thought it'd be a really cool regional touch. And I'm gonna put it on the back sort of top area of the cabinet where it looks like there used to be a sticker. In fact, I think maybe this was the original Atari serial number sticker. I, I don't see one of those on this machine. It would have had one. I wish it still did, but you know what? I'm gonna put this sticker here instead because it looks cool, even though it's not something this machine would have originally had more than likely, but it's awesome. It's an Asheville Atari Service Center sticker. And then finally, I've got one more little detail that I've really been wanting to put on this machine ever since I figured out it existed. And that is on the coin door itself. There used to be these little game pricing labels. As you can see in the manual for Missile Command here, there were several different types for different types of credit situations, and it would have come with the manual, but my manuals don't have them. So I looked around online until I found some that seemed like they could work, and yeah, I just ran across these Atari ones. I'd like some that say one coin equals one play, and we'll just stick it on the coin door there, and ah, dang it. See, it's not quite the right width. <laughs> it should be like a quarter of an inch, a couple millimeters wider on each side. So I'm not fully satisfied with this. It's okay at a distance, but again, I'd really like one that says one quarter equals one credit, and it's the right width. So if anybody knows where I can get one of those, that'd be awesome. That is finally it for this update video on the Missile Command cabinet. Uh, this thing is so much fun to work on. Yes, I know a lot of these upgrades are very minor and just tiny little things that don't add up to a whole lot, but man, it makes it really satisfying to look at and to use and to show off. Something that I'm gonna continue to be tweaking and adding to and working on for years, no doubt. And I hope that you enjoyed seeing this come together. Like I said, I've got a whole bunch of other things that I wanna mess with in the future. So maybe I'll do a video on that. Let me know if you'd like to see more of this or other arcade things. Hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, awesome. Maybe check out some of my others or stick around for new videos every week here on LGR. And as always, thank you very much for watching.